coat of arms is a unique symbol used by a group of people to distinguish them from the others. For example, when two opposite sides would meet on the battlefield, the warriors would wear the coat of arms, the symbol, so that they will distinguish their own people from the enemy, so that they will know whom to kill and whom to help. That is the definition, the very meaning of coat of arms. So, keeping that in mind, it appears to be somewhat strange, at least at first sight, that too many countries and towns and geographical areas in the past shared exactly the same symbol, the same element in their coat of arms. What is the point of having a coat of arm anyway, if it is the same like the people on the other side of the river or the next neighboring country, or if it signifies a given area, the next area has got the same emblem. It clearly doesn't seem to serve its purpose or there is something else that we don't know. The official explanation for this is that it was always a case of imitation. They saw that someone else has got such an emblem and they decided, that's great, let's adopt it ourselves as well. It means these countries, regions, organizations, all of them, couldn't find proper artists capable of coming up with their own ideas. And that is why all of them ended up with double-headed chickens on their emblems, or something, called coats of arms. The real reason for everyone sharing the same symbol, you know, the same coat of arms, is that people really belong to one single group. The group of those who received everything they call civilization from the people we call the survivors. Those who scattered themselves to spread the seeds of their culture. The people on the earth and respected those who educated them. They considered the symbols given to them by the scattered people, by the survivors, as sacred. We see double-headed eagles everywhere. And that is because people received everything that they call culture from the very same source. And they forgot that not so long ago. That is why even the modern coat of arms of many locations or organizations is still the same, the double-headed eagle. Of course, in modern times, we use it mostly without understanding its meaning, but this doesn't mean this was always the case. The symbol was used by the relatively advanced cultures in both North and even South America, cultures which allegedly developed in complete isolation from Europe and Asia, where double-headed eagles are probably the most common symbol after the swastika, which means it is really everywhere. The fact that these cultures use this symbol as well doesn't mean that both in medieval Europe and both Americas, two-headed chicken were the most common thing you can see on the road, and that's why it was a very common thing depicted by the artists. But it is rather a proof, one out of the many, that the cultures of both Americas were in tight connection with the civilization of the old world, Eurasia.
terms we usually call Middle Ages, all countries in Europe adopted the emblem of the double-headed eagle. If it is not on their state coat of arms, then it would be the symbol of important institutions. For example, this historic depiction shows some of the main areas which were, so to say, under the wings of the double eagles. In the modern times, when the people started turning their face away from the values and the culture of the survivors, no wonder that the double-headed eagle is now found on the national flags of only four countries. And all of them happen to be around this area of the Balkans or River Volga. This is not by chance, not only initially these survivors landed here for the first time before they got scattered to educate the people, but also at the later stages when they were forced to form an empire, to turn from culture to a more enclosed social organization that survived somewhat longer again in these regions of Volga and the Balkans before it got suffocated to death by the venomous parasitic serpents. And not just in the Middle Ages. According to official history, there were many ancient kingdoms and empires. And most of them had the symbol of the double-headed eagle as their state emblem. In reality, these were not completely independent kingdoms. They were subdivisions of this uh, culture of the nature people, of the scattered people, the survivors. And it is only in modern times that we are told that they were separate kingdoms just to make the fabricated history somewhat more credible by mixing half-truth in it, while at the same time they meticulously erase all traces of the memory of those who civilized us. The double-headed eagle? That doesn't make much sense from the point of view that people would normally adopt different symbols to distinguish between warring cultures, but these didn't which is quite confusing, but it makes perfect sense from the point of view of the new chronology, according to which they had the same symbol because they simply belonged to the same empire. This is a historic depiction of the legendary King Arthur with double-headed eagle on his shield. In the old chronicles, King Arthur is one of the main players on the stage of the British history. And of course, modern researchers have tried to find out clues about what was his actual identity and who was he. And what was the result of their work? Many of them actually reached the conclusion that he was some sort of blonde person who came from the east, from the regions somewhere by the shores of the river Danube, which again takes us in direction to those very same areas of the Balkans, where, according to the Book of Valles, the survivors settled for the first time. In 
In the Vedic context, the double-headed eagle is worshipped as Ganda Beruda or simply Beruda, an incarnation of the Supreme Lord Vishnu. And probably that is the only clue that uh, we have about the original meaning of this uh, most ancient uh, symbol, which is so old that, that uh, we practically cannot uh, trace its original meaning. The Masons also use this symbol. Apparently they have turned the heads of the eagles the other way around. But as all the other symbols, they have adopted them from the older religions. This is not Masonic symbol as such, exactly as the cross. They use the, cr the Masons use the cross as well, but this doesn't mean that the cross as such is purely Masonic symbol. As more and more people adopted the parasitic way of life, of course the ancient symbols were gradually replaced with symbols which would be more suitable for the new reality. And because it didn't happen all of a sudden, first they chopped one of the heads of the eagle. Or in some cases, they even chopped half of the double-headed eagle itself, like here on the coat of arms of the German town. But there was a rule whether they chopped the head, one of the heads off, or half of the eagle, it was always the eastern side that was erased. The times when, more or less, the entire earth, all of its people, were unified under these common symbols and values in life, given to them by the survivors by those who gave them everything civilized, didn't happen in some far away lost ancient time thousands and thousands of years ago. No, not at all. But even as close as the First World War, still both sides who fought against one another still had almost the same coat of arms. So recently they were divided. Indeed, that is why this war was artificially created, to divide and conquer. These two images belong to the two opposing parties. They're almost the same. God knows how much of what we're told about this war is true if they manage to fool the entire world about the wars that are going on in front of our eyes then how difficult would it be to deceive us about something that even our father has not seen? Very easy. And another example of their policy of divide and conquer, the historic country of Prussia. Its very name is so close to Russia that the first thing they are telling us is please not to be confused with Russia, says Wikipedia. And yet when it comes of the origin of the name of this country, look what are they talking about. Water, which is understandable convention in a land dotted with thousands of lakes, streams and swamps. This type of stuff they write under the etymology of the name Prussian. Birds, brooks and mostly deceit. Because as early as even Etruscan times, the people who had culture and civilization were always taking up names derived from this root, Ras Rasayanami. The Etruscans in particular wrote themselves that they are at Russians. Again, the exact word found in their writing is at Ruskie. And just for comparison in the Slavic languages, Ruskie is Russians. It's the same thing. All these at Ruskie, 
Pruski means it Russians, Prussians, and also the modern Russians. All these people derived their name from this original root, Ras, Rasayanami. Since this virus of the parasitic paradigm successfully managed to infect the ruling class of Western Europe first, or to be more precise, those who were infected and probably even genetically engineered to bear this contagion of evil, were placed as kings, insurgent kings during the times commonly known as the Reformation, this type of creatures found it below their dignity to live on the continent of the survivors, Eurasia. That's why they made their own separate continent and called it Europe. The boundary between Europe and Asia is a very tiny, small, insignificant river. Its banks, the European and the Asian, they look exactly the same, and so do the lands on both sides. There is no difference. And so the Wikipedia provides again the answer for us. Continent is a cultural thing, it says. Really, I wonder then why people study the continents during geography classes. Or is it because the eagles kill snakes?